most organic compounds that we want, for example, pharmaceuticals that are used in medicine, are larger molecules that need to be made from small building blocks that we can easily buy. So it's important to make carbon-carbon bonds. When the method to make carbon-carbon bonds comes along that involves easily accessible functional groups and gives good yields, it's worth taking a look at that chemistry. The alpha alkylation of ketones is in this category. Ketones are readily accessible, and the alkyl halides that we need are also readily accessible. As an example, let me talk about the alkylation of 2-butanone. The ketone first is treated with a very strong base at cold temperatures. This irreversibly removes an alpha proton. The second step involves adding an alkyl halide, and the result adds the alkyl part of the alkyl halide to an alpha carbon. So here's the new carbon-carbon bond. There are two alpha positions, but the reaction is regioselective for the left substituted carbon. I've shown an alkyl bromide here. Iodides are possible also, and other good leaving groups can be used. In addition to primary halides, we could use methyl iodide. So we have a variety of possibilities for the alkylating agent. We're using primary or methyl alkyl halides because this is an SN2 reaction. SN2 reactions just don't work well with secondary halides and don't work at all with tertiary halides. So the bottom line is, using LDA, a strong base, at minus 78 degrees, ketones are alkylated. They're alkylated with good regioselectivity selectivity at the less substituted alpha position. So you might be wondering about that base we use called LDA. LDA stands for lithium diisopropyl amide. Lithium diisopropyl amine is a bulky amine that isn't very acidic, but strong bases like butyl lithium remove that proton attached to the nitrogen to make lithium diisopropyl amide. And it's that unshared pair of electrons that's created by putting a negative charge on nitrogen that removes the proton. It's a very strong base, and it's a very bulky base. And the fact that it's bulky is important. That's the reason it selectively removes the less hindered alpha proton. This selectivity is great, but we might want to alkylate at the more substituted position. Other conditions let us do that selectively. Take a look. Using sodium hydride at room temperature, and then followed by the same kind of alkylating agents, we get alkylation at the other alpha position, the more highly substituted one. Again, good yields are obtained. So our take-home message here is, using base at 25 degrees, essentially room temperature, Ketones are alkylated at the more highly substituted alpha position. A quick look at the mechanism lets us explain the differing regioselectivity of these two types of conditions. LDA is a bulky base, and these two protons have different steric accessibilities. The hydrogen attached to the secondary position is harder to access, more sterically hindered, than the primary position. So LDA selectively removes the more accessible hydrogen on the methyl group. This is a resonance-stabilized enolate. The use of very low temperature is important. At low temperatures, selectivity is enhanced. Differences in energy mean more at very low temperatures. And most importantly, at low temperature, the deprotonation is irreversible. So the selectivity we achieve by using a bulky base at very low temperatures is preserved. There is no equilibrium. And the enolate that is selectively formed is the one that reacts with alkyl halide. SN2 reaction, displacement of bromide, forms the alkylated product. So regioselectivity is achieved because we selectively make the less substituted enolate. That enolate is alkylated by the alkyl halide. So how do we achieve alkylation at the more substituted alpha position? Using a smaller base at room temperature, we remove the proton at either alpha carbon. Less selectivity for the less substituted position. These are resonance stabilized, and the resonance structure with a negative charge on oxygen is the one that's dominant. These two structures are different. The double bond in this enolate is more highly substituted and therefore more stable than the double bond in the other enolate. So the enolate that is formed faster under low temperature conditions with a bulky base is less stable. This is more stable 
and it's favored when these two enolates are in equilibrium, which happens at room temperature. So both enolates are formed, they equilibrate, and we have a much larger amount of the one that's more stable. The one that has a double bond that's more highly substituted. I'm writing 25 degrees here because that's really important. It takes a higher temperature to establish the equilibrium. So this enolate is favored, and this is the major product. Smaller amounts of the less substituted alkylation product will be formed. The two preferences that we observe using the different conditions can be summarized using an energy diagram. Deprotonating the ketone, the lower energy path, the path with the lower activation energy, leads to the less stable enolate. And although there's a higher activation energy, we're making a more stable enolate, which is more substituted. When these two guys are in equilibrium, over time, formation of the more stable product is favored. That happens at a higher temperature, like 25 degrees. When these two guys cannot equilibrate, for instance at a low temperature like minus 78, the activation energy barriers are very important in determining product ratios. This is what we call the kinetic product, the product that is formed faster, having a lower activation energy, predominates. Using room temperature, equilibration happens, and under those conditions, we see a preference for formation of the more stable product, the one that we call the thermodynamic product. So this is a classical example of kinetic control versus thermodynamic control. Kinetic control occurring at low temperature and thermodynamic control occurring at higher temperature. So to summarize, we can alkylate at either alpha position. The region selectivity is accomplished by using bulky base and low temperature to alkylate at that less substituted alpha position, and by using a base at higher temperatures to accomplish alkylation at the more substituted alpha position. This is very useful in synthetic organic chemistry.